Um, what, what I do in Stoke is, is site-specific work for all sorts of different areas. I work in education, buildings, hospitals, schools, and over the last 30 years I've worked with 50,000 people. And what that involves is, is taking raw clay into schools and hospitals and getting people to design and draw on the clay. And then what I do is I take all that work back to my studio, fire it, and take the work back into the situation uh, where the people decorate their own tiles. So the people that are working on the tiles have got ownership on the work all the way through from start to finish. And then I take the work back, fire it to stoneware temperatures, and then I take it back to the situation and put it on, on the wall. And th this piece of work I've just done recently for Wade Ceramics. It's a big ceramics company in Stoke. And... Um, they wanted a piece for their reception area. And what, what it's, it's about is, is, is it's got archaeological finds that I've dug up from Stoke-on-Trent because the, the original Wade's factory closed down, so there was loads of detritus on the site, and I managed to get loads of... Um, dug loads of whimsies and all sorts of things out of the ground and then recycled them back into the work. But there's a lot of hand-modelled work on there as well. Um, Somebody asked me the other day, why do I live in Stoke? <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's just a brilliant place to live. It, it's the, if you do ceramics, it's one of the best places on the planet to be. Because within a six-mile radius of my studio, I've got um, clay, colour, kilns, engineers, f people that are excellent at firing kilns, and everything that I need to do my work. And as well as that, they've been making work in Stoke since, well, since medieval times, certainly, but, I mean, it was Josiah Wedgwood that started the ceramics early in 1710 in Burslem, and he started in a farmhouse just making... They started making containers for containing butter and milk so they could sell more of their produce, but they soon realised that what they were producing was a very marketable object. So they could, they could reuse the work and, and, and then they developed all sorts of things like ceramic colour, firing techniques, and everything was done really, really cleverly in Stoke. They had coal, they had wood, and they had clay. Those were the three elements that started the ceramics industry in Stoke. So it was, it, it was a, a pivotal time in English history when ceramics became really, really um, prevalent. So um, can I have the next slide, please? Um, my, a lot, I've been... I went to when I went to college years ago, I was very, very lucky. I feel very sorry for students today who go to college and they haven't got... They haven't really got a really a good education because the, the the quality of teaching is very poor in in art education at the moment. And uh, I used to teach in universities, but I left university to do my community and educational work because I felt that students were just being really let down. There were no government support students for one thing, and and like my daughter, who's just well a few years ago finished a degree. She, she ended up having a £50,000 debt, which she'll have to pay off sooner or later if she ever earns enough money. But, um, and I, f I find that really tragic, really. When I went to college, I, had, I did a two-year foundation in Harrogate. I did a three-year three uh, degree show in, um, in Stoke-on-Trent in sculpture. And then I went to the Royal College of Art for three years. And all that time, I had a full grant and was supported. And I, I would never have been able to do it if I hadn't have had that support in, in the education system. Um, so when I left the Royal College of Art, I I'd, I'd decided to move to Somerset, set up a studio there in a place called Bruton. And I used to make things like this. Um, I used to work out of recycled materials, plastics. Um, this was called Beirut Woman. It was the time of the Beirut War, and there was this amazing woman came out of this burnt-out building. And we all hope that war's going to end, but it never will, because we're so stupid we carry on the fighting. And this woman came out of this burnt-out building, and it, she had a, a, 
an absolutely radiant innocence about her. But if you look at her carefully, she's surrounded by the detritus of war, like tanks and soldiers and, and the madness of wars. And these wars just continue, continue happening because nobody seems to learn from our mistakes. Next slide, please. Um, and then I started making... As a ceramicist, you'll find that a lot of stuff is broken. A lot of stuff comes out of the kiln broken and doesn't work. We've all been there, but that's the best way to learn in ceramics is, is having failure. Because failure teaches you to do it right the next time. And if you can imagine in Stoke, they've been making ceramics for so long, and a lot of the, a lot of the work they produce is... Um, that they don't get paid for it unless it's, it's called good from oven. This was introduced in about 1820. And if it wasn't good from oven, the workers weren't paid for it. And it just ended up being thrown away on the, on the shard tips. So if you can imagine, everywhere in Stoke, there's the massive piles of broken ceramics. And, and, and I just thought, this is such a waste of people's skill and, and qualities. So I dug... I, I started digging in Stoke and dug loads of stuff up and then started recycling it into my own works. But what I do is I interchange it with things that I've modelled, ancient artefacts and ancient bits of ceramic that, that have, 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 have lost their purpose, really. But it's like a rebirth for me. Recycling has been intrinsic in my work all the way from the start. Next tile, please. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> This piece of work I did for a show in London, it was called Ghosts of Gone Birds, and it's, um, it's a guitar, but what I've taken, I've taken the front of the guitar off and put a perspex on the front of the guitar, and then it, it, it uh, documents all the different birds we've destroyed on the planet. There's, there's obviously, the, the main one is the dodo, but there's lots of others like the great orc, and the passenger pigeon, which was the most prolific bird on... You can't believe this. It was the most prolific bird on the planet. There was literally millions of them in, on the Americas. But when the immigrants came into America, they shot and ate every single one of them. There was one surviving passenger pigeon, which was found in Chicago Zoo, and it died on the last day of the First World War in 1918, which was... It kind of brings tears to your eyes. Um, right, next, next slide. Um, Clarice Cliff. Have you got something in the bag with Clarice Cliff on it? Um, oh, yeah, you've got it. OK. Um, I've got a friend in, who lives in Stoke, and she's, she's been digging secretly on the Clarice Cliff tip for the last three years. And she rang me up and she said, Phil, I've got all this stuff, I've got all this detritus, all this broken Clarice Cliff stuff, and I don't know what to do with it. Uh, what, what do you think we should do with it? So I'm, I'm, going, to actually, I'm going to actually make some work out of it. It's, it'll be like a celebration of Clarice Cliff, but the, her work. Because she was the most amazing woman. She created this... The, the pottery was down in Middleport. It's called Newport Pottery... It's been knocked down since... It was knocked down in the 1970s, so it's just... It's now a housing estate. But underneath the houses, there is lots of broken Clarice Cliff stuff. And it's just fascinating. I mean, just looking through these boxes of stuff, and it was all hand-decorated by predominant... Well, it was, it was mainly women. She had a group of women called the Bazaar Girls. Do you, do, does anybody know about the Clarice Cliff story? Yeah, and her her workers. She tr she was an absolutely per really clever painteress, and that's the that's the amazing thing about the potteries is that nearly all the delicate work and beautiful work was done by the women, but it's never been celebrated. Um, th th there really should be some sort of celebration of women's ceramics in Stoke, and uh, you know I'm trying I'm pushing for that seriously at the moment. So she's a pivotal character in, in ceramics development. Next slide, please. Um, a lot of my work is politically based. So what I do is I'll make stuff relating to world events 
and things that are happening. So it could be about environment, wars, disasters, and I'll document it in my work. The work I've got here at this show, it has, I've got a few political pieces, but I try and, I try and keep those for other areas, really. Um, but this, was, this was piece was based on um, the Union flag, uh, because a few years ago I thought Scotland was going to leave so I thought the English flag was going to disappear forever. So I thought, we ha I have to make some documentation of a Union flag. But this piece was all based on London. So all the pieces in it are, are, are things from London. London buses, um, royalty, all sorts of bits and pieces. Thank you. Next slide. Um, I do a lot of work with children and, and young people. Um, this was a really special piece of work for me. Um, and it was, it was right up my street because it was, about, um, it was about creating better harmony with people. For me, my work is, is all about creating a better harmony with different races of people. We live in a very multicultural society and the world is very multicultural. So it's so important that we work together as, as humanity to make sure we just don't destroy the planet. And um, I was asked to do this piece of work by um, Sta uh, Staffordshire Council, and it was to go in the German War Memorial, which was in, in Cannock Chase. And I worked with a group of German students that come over every year to tend the garden, and also there was a group of English students as well. So they all came together... And we produced this piece of work, which is at the German... Does anybody know where the German War Cemetery... Or has anybody ever been to it? It's a, it's a fascinating place because it's... Um, I think there's something like 2,000 bodies from the First and Second World War. And it's German troops who were killed either in... It, like, shot down over England and their bodies were put in this cemetery... But they put the cemetery in the middle of nowhere because just after the Second World War, they, they thought it would be destroyed by people who were angry about the war, who had lost relatives and stuff. So it, it's, it's, a, it's a place of real um, tranquility and, and calmness. And all, all, the German, all the German soldiers' names are on the grave. And they're all young men. They're all in their 20s, 21, 22. So... This was about reconciliation. It was about working with a group of German students and English students together and creating a piece to celebrate peace. Um, thank you. Next slide. Um, one thing I'm very passionate about is, um, is the, um, the amount of people in the ceramic industry who've died of ceramic-related diseases... It's that nobody's, nobody's ever really documented it properly, but we think in Stoke something like 100,000 people died because of ceramic-related diseases, both silicosis, lead poisoning from the colours, because people didn't realise the toxicity of the materials they were, they were using. I mean, all these potters who are here today, we all know how toxic these materials are, so we all, we've all got masks and stuff but years ago people didn't understand well they didn't have masks so they didn't understand it so um, um, the, the ceramic trade union paid for this piece of work to be created to celebrate the premature deaths of the 100,000 workers and uh, it, that piece of work is in, in Burzum School of Art and uh, we, we had very little money to pay to make it because it was a big piece of work it was like seven foot by five foot wide. And um, the, the ceramic trade union went to the council and said, Will, would you be willing to give us some money towards this piece of work? And they said, no, we don't want to celebrate that things like that in Stoke. We want to forget about it, brush it under the carpet. It was just amazing. Their, their reaction was amazing. But we went ahead and did the piece anyway. And um, it's, it's there. And it's, it's, it's got all the things like... Well, I mean, there was I, one, of the, one of the most terrible stories I heard was there used to be um, there used to be young female workers who were like between eight and twelve years old, 
and they were called thimble pickers. And their job was, after the, after the kilns were fired, they'd have to go into the kiln and pick out all the small kiln furniture and recycle it back for the next firing. But it was such a toxic environment to work in, many of those girls didn't reach the age of 25. They all died before they were 25. So it, it, it's a serious subject matter that we all have to remember and not forget. And don't forget, there was, there was 2,000 um, bottle kilns in Stoke. These are bottle kilns here on, on this piece of work. And there was 2,000 of them belching out smoke. They were all co coal or wood-fired. So the pollution in Stoke was really, really bad. But it's probably the most polluted place on the planet at one time. But then the, uh, eventually the Clean Air Act came in in the 1950s and 60s, and they, they, um, they stopped, st just stopped kiln firings in, with wood and coal, and everything was turned to either gas kilns or electric kilns. And those kilns were fired by men, and they were men, there wasn't any girls firing the kilns, they were fired by men who looked through the spy hole in the kiln, and they could tell exactly what the temperature was by the human eye, now, I mean, we as potters here today, we, we've, got therm we've got control of temperature on the kiln, how the kiln rises, we've got uh, pyrometric cones, we've got electric readers of temperature so we know exactly what's going on inside the kiln. But then they didn't, they just used to... They, there was guys shoveling the coal in from underneath the kiln and, and they'd, they'd look at the colour and they'd say, right, it, we've got to temperature now, cut out the stoking, so they shut the kiln off. And, but there was a lot of failures and there was a lot of um, probably disasters where things weren't fired properly and then the workers weren't paid because it wasn't good from oven. So that's an, another fascin fascinating subject matter. Next slide, please, thank you. Oh, yeah, that's the, that's the um, ceramic trade union... And it's based on a union banner, but it's three-dimensionally modelled and, and it's got the factories all behind and how Stoke was. So it, it, that is a permanent reminder of, of what went on in Stoke years ago with kiln firings. Thank you. Um, this is a piece I've done on a local primary school. I did this 20 years ago, um, and it's, it's in Mau Cop, which is just above Stoke. And uh, what I do is, I, I, again, I take all the clay into the schools, the children make the tiles, and then I, fire, I take all the clay back to my studio, fire it, and then take it back to the children to decorate it and, and fire it again, and then I stick the whole thing. So this was like a full-size dragon. It was like 30 foot long with flames coming out of its nose and stuff. And, and uh, yeah, that, that's, that's still there at Malcop. It's, um, of course, every, everything that's outside has to be stoneware fired because in this country it's not like doing work in Spain with Gaudi where it's earthenware fired. It doesn't have any frost to break the glaze off, so it has to be fired really high, so 12.50 or something I fired that. Thank you. Um, this was a piece I did by the canal in stone and it's... Um, it was, it was a, it, a sculptural throne. And it, the idea was that people used to come through the uh, canal on, on uh, canal boats and um, they, they, didn't, they didn't get off, they just went through the town. So this, this was by the side of the canal and it allowed people to get, have a break from the canal boat, get off and, and sit on the the throne, and, and, and it, it's, it's two seats for two adults and two smaller seats for children. And the idea is you, you can sit on this seat, have photographs taken, and, and look like... A, a, it, it's, it's called Throne for Common Man, so it was, it was a, a, a big three-dimensional throne to allow people to um, <coughs> feel more important than they actually are, probably. <laughs> um, next slide, please. Um, yeah, while, we, while I was working on the piece, the ceramic piece for the trade union, um, 
Prince Charles came to the studio, because I, I hired a studio, I needed a bigger studio to do the work. And um, I'd already done a piece of Prince Charles a few years before at Middleport Pottery. The Prince's Trust rang me up and said they wanted me to do a piece of work which, which uh, celebrated... Does anybody know Middleport Pottery in Stoke? It's, it's by the canal... And it, it's, it, was, it, was a, it was called a model factory. It, ha it used to have eight um, bottle kilns, and it was built in 1880. And it had, they had a perfect uh, configuration of how the clay came into one side of the factory, went through, was processed, and went out the other end onto the canal system where it was delivered all around the world. It's an absolutely must place to visit. If you ever go to Stoke-on-Trent, you must visit it. Um, Prince Charles saved the factory and 150 jobs. So they're still making the original work they made in Victorian time. It's called Burley Ware. And uh, when he came to my studio the second... Because I met him about eight years ago, I suppose. And he came, came to my studio the second time. And he just walked in through and he said, Oh, hi, Phil. I didn't realise you were working here. And he, you know, he he, he recognised me and remembered who I was, and which was you know was quite quite astounding, really. Next time, uh, next. Um, um, I do a lot of work as well, which tries to break down racial barriers between different people. So, I do pieces with like all sorts of different characters in. There's like Nelson Mandela, Jimi Hendrix. Um, Afro-Caribbean characters, all sorts of red Indians. Because we, we live in, on a planet which is so small now, communication between nations is, is so minimal. It, you know, you, we know exactly what went in, on in Kabul ten minutes ago, and, and we're all affected by that. The amount of information we take in is just unbe uh, unbelievable, really. And, and this piece of work... The coexist sign is made from different symbols from different religions, and um, I had I had a co I had another coexist piece on my stall this morning, and the guy came up to the, my stall and said, "Oh, th this this is just amazing! This piece of work." And he was an is it was an Israeli guy who was working to help Palestinian children. And he came out with so many amazing stories about the work that he does between breaking down barriers between different people. And, um, and I just said, you know, he said, oh, I'm going to have to buy this piece of work from you because I really want it for my office. Because lots of people will see it and it will communicate exactly the right ethos that I, what my whole lifestyle is about. So, um, yeah, that piece is gone now. Um, <clears throat> This is an interesting piece of work. I did this piece um, about four years ago. And uh, I, one of my friends in Stoke, who used to be the uh, Labour MP for Stoke North, a woman called Joan Wally, and she's an amazing person. She's, um, she's probably the best Prime Minister this country has never had because <laughs> she was such a good, a good orator and... and Everything about her was just brilliant. And she came to me and she said, look, I've got this idea, Phil. Uh, she was working in the House of Parliament at the time, and she said, the Minton floor in the House of Commons is wearing away. The, 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 if you have a look at the piece of work, it's, it's got... Um, these, are, these are Minton tiles here. Yeah, th this picture is actually better on this screen than your picture, sorry. And um, she said, I can get you a load of mints and tiles to create this piece of work. And what I did was I created a speaker's corner in a Georgian building in Stoke, which is the Burzum Town Hall, which is now a... It's been t it was a derelict for years, this building, a really beautiful Georgian town hall. And it's now a sixth-form college for a local school... And they wanted a debating society. So I, I said, well, yeah, we, we, I could create a speaker's corner in, in the building. So I created this lectern with Minton tiles. And bearing in these... It, it was a funny story because it was like 
the tiles were made in Stoke in 1880, and they'd been taken to the House of Commons, put on the floor, and hundreds of people, hundreds of MPs, and all the famous people of, of our political system have walked on those floors and worn them out. And then I was, I had to go down to Parliament, pick up these tiles, bring them back to Stoke, and and rebirth them in another form. So this is what I produced. I, I produced this sculptural lectern that you can speak from, and then on. The two pads on either side are inch-thick glass with underneath, with, with mint and tiles underneath the floor. So you can still feel like you're walking on the tiles, but you're actually walking on a, an inch piece of glass. And uh, again, if you, were, if you were ever in Stoke, go and try and go and have a look at that piece of work. Thank you. Um, yeah, th this is another Union flag I produced, but I just liked it because it, it, this piece went to America a couple of years ago and the people that eventually got it got their children to put their hands on it, So, and it was a very nice picture. Thank you. Um, going back a few years, um, this piece of work was done about the great debate we've got today about the the motor car and it was about the Newbury bypass everybody knows about the Newbury bypass don't they uh, the, the one where Swampy was uh, up a tree or dug underground and it, it people look at this piece of work and say oh it's such a beautiful thing you've produced but you've ruined it by putting <laughs> the cars around it but that was the whole idea it was, it was an environmental um, piece which it was called Gridloke so it was it was a combination of cars and and the and the battle with nature, which we 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 all have to deal with every day. I mean, I, I don't know if we I don't know if anybody thinks we were ever going to get round to, or getting rid of petrol and diesel engines, but it's not it's, it's going to be a very difficult and long process. So yes, thank you. Um, this piece is uh, based on America, obviously. And it, it's made of, it's based on the American flag, but it's based on lots of different uh, people from America and uh, Elvis Presley and Madonna and all sorts of things. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I made this piece, um, I sold this piece recently in the last couple of years. It's, it's, it's called In the Dog House, and it's a cross between a house and a dog. Hi, Nick. <laughs> Thank you. I think we must be getting close to the finish. Are we? Five, yeah. Next one, then, please. Yeah, one thing I'm experimenting with at the moment is Parian clay. It was a clay which was uh, made in Victorian time, and they produced, like, statues out of it, because it was very similar um, quality to marble. But it's not marble, it's a clay. But it's not really a clay, it's glass, really. Because when, you, when you're working with it, it's very, very weird stuff because it sticks to your fingers and you can't... And, and what I did, I produced these uh, chandeliers. And, and these are all my moulds that I use in my own work, which, you know, like all the pieces that are in this piece are probably in that piece as well. And you press the parian into the mould and then take it out and you fire it to 12.30. But it's strange stuff, because if you fire it, if you underfire it, it doesn't, it's not translucent. If you overfire it, it turns into molten material which runs all over your kiln shelves and destroys everything. Thank you. And, yeah, that's another pairing piece without light, just the pairing piece. Thank you. Um, this was a commission I had a few years ago. It's... it's uh, a shrine to Elvis Presley. Um, th this woman that um, commissioned this piece of work was an Elvis... Pre she did lectures about Elvis Presley all over the world, and she had loads of memorabilia about Elvis Presley, and, and then I put this piece of work together, which was just like a triptych shrine to Elvis Presley. Thank you. Um, this piece is called Womankind... And I know that word doesn't exist in the dictionary, but it bloody should do. 
it's just amazing that that word has never been put into the dictionary, but there we have it. Thank you. And we're back to the last one. Um, yeah, so that's it really. If you want to ask any questions, or if you want to come over and have a look at my work, which is in the Ian Gregory stand, you're very welcome. Thank you. I don't. Have, has anybody got any questions to ask? <laughs> Sorry, could you speak up? Because I've got hearing aids and I can't. Stoke-on-Trent, without Stoke-on-Trent, there wouldn't be a ceramics industry. I know there's been massive uh, factory closures, that we've lost something like 50,000 workers over the last 30 years, but there's still uh, 10,000 people in the city doing ceramics in one form or another. And, and, and it's, it's a fantastic place to live if you're a ceramicist, because if you've got a problem, you can just get on the phone and Somebody will be round to your house, fix your kiln, or uh, if something's gone wrong... Well, I mean, I buy my clay from Valentine's, and, and they're just such a good company. You go around and you see them and say, I'm making this particular piece of sculpture, what would you recommend me to use? And they've got, like, 300 different sorts of clay in, in, their, in their factory. So they'll, they'll give you a sample of the clay, you can fire it and work out whether it's the right material for what you want to do... And then you've got other people that produce colour, which is, I mean, we're very, uh, going back to this thing, we're very lucky as ceramicists now because all the early colour development and development of, of, of things in the ceramic industry has already been sorted out. Well, I mean, years ago, they had to experiment with absolutely every single material to get it right, to make sure it fired right, to make sure the colour was right and to make sure it... You know, the glaze didn't fall off or it didn't melt and run all over the kiln. So, it, it, it's, for me, it's just such a special place to live. And, and having, the, having stuff like anywhere where there's a building site, I'll, I'll, I put a hard hat on and hard shoes and I'll go on to it and start... Di I get permission to dig in places. And, and I mean, I, I, the, the other... The, about four years ago, the Wade's factory closed, the Wade's factory in Burslem, and I was allowed to dig on the site, and I was, I was just amazed at the stuff I got out of the ground. It was just... I mean, do, does everybody know the little Wade's Whimsies animals? If you come to, if, if you come to my stall after the show, I'll, I'll give you all one for, uh, for being so patient with my lecture. I'll, I'll give you a one to take away. They're made in the 1960s, out of porcelain, and they're just the most beautiful objects. And, and you know, I used, to, I used to just dig holes and find thousands of them. And I give them away, to, when I work in schools, I give them away to children, because children love them. And it, it's just such a, it, it's such a wonderful thing to give away to make somebody happy. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah. Um, you have a space in the middle, a sphere of emptiness. What, what does that kind of use? Um, is it, was that a mirror in the middle? It could have been. It could yeah, have been. it was probably a mirror. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. Because, because um, anybody that buys that piece of work, they put it on the wall and they become part of the piece of work. That's the. That's yeah. the yeah, yeah, that's that's the womankind. I mean, you, you know, you have that piece of work in your house, and it's got, you know, a, a celebratory piece about women, and you've got like, um, you know, you become part of the piece of work. That that's the whole idea of it. Um, I use a very specialised ceramic adhesive. 
So it, um, ideally, the best surface to stick them to is brick. So I use um, uh, PVA glue on the brick to, to, to make sure that the adhesive sticks really well to the wall. And then I use the adhesive, which is um, it's rapid set. It's called rapid set. It's made in Stoke. And, and I've, had, I've used lots of different tile adhesives to make sure that you know, I want my work to last a long time. You know, I think, I think if you're doing community and educational work and you've got work on public buildings, you, you know, it has to be of quality. And, and it's no good making something that falls apart in 10 years. I mean, I've got, I've got loads of pieces of work in Stoke that I did 20 years ago. And they're very much, you know, perf as perfect as the day I stuck them. There's been occasionally I've had vandalism, but in general, oh, don't little glitch. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I did a piece in my local town called Kids Grove, and um, everybody said, "Oh, you, it's pointless doing work here because the kids are all a nightmare. They're all smoking dope and fighting and stuff." and and taking drugs and, and anything you do with the kids, it'll just be destroyed. You're wasting your time. And I said, well, hold on a second. I'm working with those kids. Those are the, those are the very kids I've been asked to work with. And I was, I was sticking this piece of work on... Uh, well, the, the council wanted me to put it on the town hall, and I said, it's pointless on the town hall. Nobody will see it. I said, you've just spent £30,000 on a new toilet block in the centre of the town, and it still looks shit. It's a really disastrous building. It's like a, a bunker, basically. And, and I made this mosaic and stuck it on the toilet block. And as, as I was sticking it, old people were coming by and they were saying, oh, you're wasting your time here. It'll all be destroyed. It'll all be taken down by the naughty kids and stuff. I said, it's the naughty kids that have made it. And that piece, I made it 15 years ago. It's as good as the day I stuck it on. Because those children are really proud of the work they've made for that piece of work. So they go back with their mobile phones and they're posing and have photographs taken of, with their work. And it's just wonderful, that sense of engagement with people and, and breaking down barriers between people in society. You know, a lot, of, a lot of older people are very negative about younger people in society. And it, it's about being able to get people together to sort out their differences. Thank you.